Hey, what's up you guys? I'm Dr. Sharma, nursing school, PA school, medical school, or a PhD in anatomy and physiology. These all obviously sound like some tough educational paths, but what do these all have in common? Anatomy. Yeah, anatomy is kind of a big deal, but no matter what related or medical field that you go into, you'll find that you will actually use a good part of your anatomy during your everyday training and everyday work balance. So learning it efficiently the first time can really help you down the road. For example, if you're pre-nursing, or in nursing school, and they're asking you to place an IV line in the antecubital fossa, you kind of have to know where the antecubital fossa is, and that's right here at the elbow crease. And while a lot of you see that as pretty simple anatomy, a large percentage of people will still have to learn that vocabulary so they know it cold. In fact, in medical school, it's such a big deal that medical schools require a vigorous cadaver lab dissection using actual bodies that people have donated through opting in to be organ donors. So as you embark on that journey, by the way, and if you happen to use a cadaver lab and you're in medical school, remember that those are people who actually opted in for that and respect that. With that being said, anatomy can be a very challenging subject, especially when you're tested on it through oral examinations or on a written exam. And I'm gonna give you some of my advice on how I learned it really quickly. And I have to admit the way that I learned it is a little bit embarrassing, so buckle up. Number one, get a list of the anatomical parts or that organ system that you're going to have to learn before an exam or before starting that section. Now your professor or whoever's teaching that course should be able to provide that for you or if they've assigned you a chapter in an anatomy book, there should be a list of terms in order for you to go through and understand what terms you actually need to know. Now find this list, grab a piece of paper and pen and start writing down each of the terms so that you can learn the spelling and sort of just familiarize yourself with that vocabulary. And yeah, I mean like physically write it on a sheet. Don't type it, don't imagine it and just read it a couple of times, but actually physically write it down. And I know it's gonna take a little bit of time at first, but again, you've gotta get familiar with the vocabulary and the Latin terms, suffixes and prefixes that go into a lot of anatomy and physiology terms. We're sort of getting your synapses flowing for when we really have to learn the association with those terms to actual physical objects. Next, you're gonna have that same sheet of paper or grabbing a new sheet, your pencil, or you can use a whiteboard and a marker or even a blackboard and chalk. But essentially this next part is going to involve that kind of embarrassing part that I was talking about. Now pull up that section in your anatomy book or a PDF, an ebook, even just Googling a picture online of the slice or axial image or just some sort of anatomical image such as a hand, a slice through the hand or musculature that you want to learn. For example, if I just said medullary pyramid, that's probably not just gonna pull up an example of anatomy for you right away in your head. You have to learn it. So why don't we pull up a slice through the kidney and learn the anatomy that way. You can say cross-sectional image of the kidney, Google that or find it in your anatomy book, especially if you're on the renal course and have to learn that anatomy. And now just draw out sort of a cartoon picture of the basic simple anatomy with the contours and sort of just the picture of it. It does not have to be that complicated. So I know some of you might say, hey, well, I'm not really an artist. How am I really supposed to draw this? and I feel like this is a terrible idea. Don't doubt yourself, okay? You have to draw it as if you're a five-year-old, just drawing out the simple parts of the anatomy, and that's actually sort of the point. The point of this is, is to be able to recreate this using your own hands, and that way you can sort of recreate it in your mind on your own later on, and then you're using those terms and that vocabulary, writing each one of those terms down, and then pointing it to the anatomical area or whatever that landmark is on the picture. So I realize, yeah, you have to draw a little bit, but that's sort of the point. It's, it's sort of getting you to draw that, even in a five-year-old easy sort of sketch. You don't have to be an artist to do this. So once you draw out the basic parts, learn those contours, just draw lines from each of the places that the book or the PDF has that's labeled for each of those parts. And don't label it quite yet. Just have the line written from each part. And here I'm gonna do an example for you. So once you've got your anatomy drawn out and you have lines labeling each part that you want to identify on the image. The image, of course, should have those parts identified with the vocabulary there, with the terms that you need to know. You then go ahead and try to do it yourself as much as you can, but then going back to the picture and finding the answers for those anatomical parts that are labeled and writing them in. So once you've got your diagram labeled out, you can go ahead and start labeling things such as the medullary pyramids, renal cortex, major and minor calyx, interlobar arteries, the renal artery and veins, so on and so forth. If you have to learn something that's a little bit more complicated, like the skull base or the temporal bone, something that's a little bit harder to draw, that's a little bit more complicated, that's okay. You can do those part by part. Do it asymmetrically, meaning like you do it one side and then the other. Do it both sides if you need to, such as the actual skull base in both sides. 
that part, that anatomy is actually very difficult and it may be pretty hard to draw. But again, just a simple sketch of it and just getting the general idea and those sorts of different parts of that, like body part that you're trying to learn, that's sort of what the point is. You'll start to notice that you're really gonna learn the vocabulary and then you'll start to notice that eventually, after you've done this, even one time, I usually like to do this at least three times on something that I'm really trying to learn, you'll start to notice that you're gonna start being able to label more of those parts without looking back at the pictures often. And then you're gonna start seeing that you can actually pull up that image yourself. And that image might even be the colored and more detailed picture in the book, even though you were just drawing it simply in a five-year-old sketch. Because what it is, is you're being actively involved in the process of recreating that anatomy and associating it with those terms. Active learning really is the best learning. And while you may think that this might not really sound efficient, you're saying, hey, I need to be doing this three times. Well, if you're drawing just a simple sketch that's really straightforward and just labeling it and taking the time to do that efficiently, it actually does not take that long. It didn't take me too long when I was learning essentially every part of the body during medical school. It just takes a little bit of energy and yeah, a little bit of imagination. And again, it might be a little bit embarrassing because you're kind of just drawing these little cartoon pictures. And finally, before your cadaver lab examination or the anatomy test or whatever exam it is that you're gonna be required to know that anatomical vocabulary, pull out that list of anatomy terms that we talked about one last time and write them out word for word and really learning that spelling because sometimes the exam might be typed and you'll have to actually know the spelling in case you're gonna get docked points on misspelling anatomy. Repetition is important and this way the repetition happens to be pretty quick. So it really should not take you too long. And if it does, then maybe anatomy is gonna take you a little bit longer to learn. It took me actually quite a bit of work to do this, but I definitely would say this was the most efficient way and I really learned my anatomy well. If you have any questions or other techniques that you wanna know about, please comment below. Like and subscribe for more videos. It lets me know how I'm doing and how I can work to better improve my education on these. As always, good luck.